Chief Justice David Maraga is presiding over the launch of the judiciary's e-filing system for Nairobi courts at the Supreme Court's building. Let's cross over and listen in. Uh, formally, I will invite the Honorable uh, Chief Registrar of the Judiciary uh, to officially uh, welcome you to the Supreme Court and the Judiciary and to officially get us started off with the program. Welcome, uh, CRJ. Thank you, Conrad. Uh, the Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, Justice David Kenani Maraga, the Deputy Chief Justice and Vice President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, Honorable Philomena Mwilu, Honorable Commissioners of the Judicial Service Commission here present, Cabinet Secretary, East Africa Community and Regional Development Affairs, Mr. Adin Mohammed, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of ICT, Mr. Joe Musheru, the Director, Public Prosecution, Mr. Nurdin Haji, uh, Your Excellency, Franz McKen, Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Kenya, Judges of the Supreme Court of Kenya, Judges of the Court of Appeal, led by the President of the Court of Appeal, Honorable Justice William Oko, Judges of the High Courts and Courts of Equal Status, led by their respective principal judges, Honorable Judge Lydia Chode, Honorable Judge Maureen Onyango, Honorable Judge Samson Okongo, the CEO is EACC, Mr. Twalib Barak, President of the Law Society of Kenya, all heads of agencies and representatives of the National Council on the Administration of Justice, judicial officers, registrars, staff, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, welcome to the judiciary. It's great to have all of you here this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is an exciting day for us as we celebrate the launch of the e-filing system in our Nairobi courts. Today marks a major milestone in the transformation of the judiciary, a journey which began in 2012 and which identified information and communication technology as an important transformation pillar. Ladies and gentlemen, in January 2017, the Honorable the Chief Justice launched our current blueprint, Sustaining Judiciary Transformation, a service delivery agenda that has laid emphasis on the use of ICT to further enhance service delivery. The launching of uh, our e-filing today is a culmination of years of piloting and admittedly trial and error of different technological products. We have had to overcome many barriers to get here, from internal and external resistance to the absence of standardized manual systems amenable to technological translation to a very thin resource base and an under-resourced yet very capable ICT directorate. Even as we celebrate e-filing, we must not forget other technological strides that we have made in the judiciary without much fanfare. When we introduced electronic payment system in the judiciary in the financial year 2013-14, our revenue shot up from about 500 million in the previous year to over 2.1 billion. And the second, uh, and, and the revenue increases have continued since. We now have the case tracking system in 60 of our courts, and the rest of the courts will soon follow. The, the case tracking system incorporates the e diary and the daily course lists. 
our sexual offenders registra register is also electronic, among other operational efficiency gains that we have made. More recently, ladies and gentlemen, when COVID-19 came calling, the judiciary was the first arm of government to go virtual and has managed to keep the operations of the court open throughout the period. Indeed, the returns of the courts show increased productivity in some of our courts. And the Court of Appeal, for example, has nearly doubled its productivity through exclusive and extensive use of virtual platforms. Well done, Court of Appeal. Honorable Chief Justice, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the success of the e-filing system is the business of all court users. This includes our litigants, our NCAJ partners, the lawyers, office of the DPP, the Inspector General of Police, Correction Services, Probation and Aftercare Services, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, Directorate of Criminal investigations among others. And this requires that we purposefully and intentionally commit our efforts and build synergies that go beyond the judiciary to all the other actors in the justice sector. The judiciary will ensure to carry everyone along. We thank all the NCJ agencies for all their support and cooperation so far. May I take this early opportunity to congratulate the ICT team ably led by Mr. Stephen Ekeling for the effort, diligence, and commitment demonstrated <laughs> in uh, making e-filing as well as other ICT initiatives a reality for us. I also wish to thank, I uh, wish to appreciate Honorable Justice Gatembo Cairo, Chair of the Judiciary Integrated Case Management System Committee, and his entire team for the strategic guidance and tireless efforts that have led to what we are witnessing here today. I want to thank the Honorable the Chief Justice, the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice for their leadership and commitment to a more efficient and effective judiciary. May I also register my appreciation to our partners, our development partners, including the World Bank under the JP project, IDLO, UNODC, among others, for all the contributions towards the technological advancements in the judiciary. Once again, I welcome you all to the judiciary. Thank you for coming. May God bless us all. May I now welcome uh, the chair of the Integrated Case Management System, Honorable Justice Gatembo Cairo, Judge of Appeal, uh, to speak to us. Welcome, Judge. My Lord uh, Chief Justice, um, permit me for purposes of uh, time to adapt, copy and paste the protocols as pronounced by the uh, CRJ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the launch of electronic filing system by the Honorable Chief Justice this morning marks a major turning point in service delivery in the judiciary. I am confident that we as the judiciary and our stakeholders are ready to embrace more efficient work methods. Let me share with you two recent experiences. As you are all aware, virtual remote or remote court proceedings, as the Honorable CRJ has said, is now commonplace in the judiciary. I was very encouraged recently to see a post in the social media by a not so young, but a very prominent Mombasa advocate who narrated how he ordinarily spent three hours to travel from Mombasa to Malindi, make an appearance before the court there for about 20 to 30 minutes, get back onto his vehicle, into his vehicle, and drive another three hours to get back to Mombasa. In that post, he contrasted 
that ordeal with his experience with virtual court appearance and acknowledge the time cost uh, saving that he was able to achieve right from the comfort of his air-conditioned office uh, in Mombasa. He expressed the hope that the judiciary will maintain these virtual hearings even after COVID-19 crisis is behind us. And we believe this is the way to go. Another uh, experience that is testament to these achievements is that a week ago, my colleagues and I, who sat on a bench in the Court of Appeal, were dealing with an appeal uh, that involved parties drawn from Siaya, Australia, and Nairobi. One of the parties in that appeal was bedridden in a remote part of the country. But he was nonetheless able to fully participate and did not seek an adjournment because he was able to connect and be able to be heard uh, fully uh, through these virtual uh, hearings. I give these two instances uh, to give testament that the judiciary's digital strategy is bearing fruit uh, in the judiciary, and it is indeed facilitating access to justice. My Lord Chief Justice, my involvement in this exciting project started in January of 2017 when your Lordship appointed me to chair the Integrated Court Management Systems Committee. This committee was first established by the former Chief Justice, the Honorable Dr. Uh, Willy Mutunga, in October of 2014. And the object was to assist the judiciary in actualizing its judiciary uh, digital strategy. The Honorable Mr. Justice Richard Mwongo, from whom I took over, laid a very firm foundation for the committee that is, uh, whose membership is drawn from across the judiciary, from directorates, and indeed from the ICT authority. The main point of reference for our committee's activities is the Chief Justice's blueprint, which, sustaining judiciary uh, transformation, to which uh, the Honorable uh, Chief Registrar has, has referred. The SJT, in short. It provides a roadmap for the automation of the judiciary with the objective of enhancing service delivery and access to justice, as well as infusing transparency and accountability. Our core mandate as a committee is to ensure that ICT becomes a practical and useful tool for delivery of judicial services with specific requirements to deliver on promises the SJT uh, uh, makes. And there are five uh, uh, programs under that, uh, prog uh, under that uh, strategy which I will not uh, uh, bother you with, but they are readily available on, on the uh, document. We were required, as part of our working approach, to review past efforts to entrench ICT in the judiciary and to consolidate lessons learned as means of ensuring that we achieve success. We also drew from relevant experiences of other jurisdictions including our neighboring uh, and exemplary Rwanda, Singapore, the United uh, Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, and even Estonia. We subsequently constituted ourselves into three main committees, uh, namely a committee on case tracking, uh, a committee on court recording and transcription, and for re of relevance today, a committee on e-filing. The case tracking uh, system committee was headed and is headed by the Honorable uh, 